Let's say we're given an array of integers and we want to find the maximum sum in a contiguous non-empty subarray. So for example, if I have this list right here with eight elements consisting of negative one, three, negative two, five, three, negative five, two, and two, then I wanna find the maximum possible sum that I can create given that I select any arbitrary contiguous non-empty subarray. So for example, if I select the subarray from negative five to two, that covers these three elements, then my possible sum here would be negative one because negative five plus two is negative three, plus two is negative one. Now the point of this problem is to find the maximum possible one. And it turns out that the maximum possible sum is nine. And we can create that by taking these elements right here. So we have three, negative two, five, and three, and those add up to nine. So how do we go about solving this? Well, we're gonna follow two steps. So our first step is to generate a prefix sum array, and I've just abbreviated that as PSA. And then our second step after we've done that is to find the largest difference between two sums in the prefix sum array. So the reason we're generating that prefix sum array in the first place is that we need to actually find the sums between two different ranges, because this has to be contiguous. So I'm always gonna have some sort of lower bound and some upper bound. And it takes a linear amount of steps to actually calculate out each sum by hand. So if we pre-compute that, then if we ever need to calculate a sum, we can simply do it by referencing the lower bound and the upper bound. And I've created a past video on the basics of prefix sums through range sum queries. You can go check that out on my YouTube channel. So we'll use this prefix sum array concept in the first step. And then the second step is important because in order to find this max sum, we need to find the maximum possible difference between the upper bound and the lower bound. And so this is going to help us find that. So let's start with the first step. Let's say I create my prefix sum array and I'm just going to call it sums. So we'll say that sums is equal to sum list and let's start populating it. So we're just going to include a zero at the beginning just so then it represents that we're not actually using any element yet. And now the next element is going to be adding the first item. So we add zero to negative one and that gives us negative one. Next, we add three. So three to negative one gives us two. So we have two here. And then we add a negative two, so we go back to zero. And then we add five, so we go to five. And then we add a three, so we increase to eight. And then we subtract five, so we go back to three. And then we increase by two, so we go to five. And finally, we increase by two again, and we go to seven. And so we end up with a sums list that looks something like this. So that covers our first step. Now we need to do our second step. So given that we have this list, we need to find the largest difference between two sums in the sums array. So how are we gonna go about doing this? Well, one way to do this might be to just do a nested brute force. So that basically means that I'm searching through my entire list once, and for each one of those searches, I'm searching again through the list for every index after that index that I'm starting at. And we could do this, but this is going to be too slow. This is actually going to end up making our algorithm into a quadratic runtime. And we don't want a quadratic runtime. We wanna see if we can make it a little less than that because otherwise it'll take too long. So the other method that we can use is going backwards. We're going to keep track of the maximum possible upper bound that we've seen. And as we go backwards, we're going to keep factoring in that lower bound that we see. We're going to update the max upper bound that we can see. And we're going to find the maximum possible difference that we have. Now, before we actually write this out, we just have to consider that the subarray has to be non-empty. So whenever we're considering any sort of difference between upper bound and lower bound, we need to make sure that the upper bound is not equal to that lower bound index. Because if they are, that means that we've tried to capture a subarray that is empty. So let's start with i equals seven. So i equals seven. And at i equals seven, let's say that the maximum possible upper bound that we see is just going to be the last element here. So max end, that's what we're gonna call it max end equals seven, because notice that we're starting at one index before the last index. That's just to make sure that we maintain a non-empty subarray. Now, once we have this, we can take what we think to be currently the max sum, and that's going to be seven minus five. So that's this element minus this element, and the difference is two. So we'll just call that sum, sum equals two. All right, let's move on to index six. So i equals six, and at this point, we can now see that we have five, well, five is still less than seven, so max end is still gonna be seven. So max end equals seven. And our sum is going to be seven minus three, which is four. So sum equals four. 
And so that's going to update our maximum sum that we have here. And now we move to index five. So at index five, we have the element eight and we can see our max end as three. Well, three is still less than seven. So we're going to still maintain max end equals seven. And then our sum is going to be seven minus eight, but then seven minus eight is negative one. And we don't wanna change that. So we're still going to keep sum equals four because four is greater than negative one. Let's move on to index four. And at this point, now we can see that eight is greater than seven. So now that we have a greater max end, we'll say max end is updated so that it is equal to eight. And now the sum that we accumulate here is going to be eight minus, and then we're gonna take index four, so that's five. So eight minus five is three. Well, three is less than four, so we're going to keep four. So i equals three. And at this point, max end is still eight. It's not going to be updated to five because five is less than eight. So max end is still equal to eight. And at this point, we take eight minus zero because zero is at index three. And that sum is indeed greater than four because eight minus zero is eight. Now we move to index two, i equals two. And at index two, we have element two. And the element after that was zero. Well, zero is still less than eight, so we keep max end. So max end is equal to eight. And now we take eight minus the element at index two, and that's going to be sum is equal to eight minus two is six. Well, eight minus two is six is less than eight. So we're gonna keep whatever we had before for sum. And then we move to index one. So i equals one. And at i equals one, we have negative one. And at the index greater than that, we have two. Well, two is still less than eight, so we're gonna keep max end. So max end is equal to eight. And then sum is going to be eight minus negative one. Well, that actually increases it to nine. And nine is greater than eight, so we're going to update sum. So sum is equal to nine. And finally, we have index zero. i equals zero. And here, we can now see negative one, that's at index one. And negative one is still less than eight, so we keep max end. Max end is equal to eight. And here we take sum to be eight minus zero. Zero is at index zero. And that happens to be eight. Well, eight is less than nine, so we keep whatever sum we had. So sum is still equal to nine. And that wraps it up for our iteration. And so we end up with a final sum that is nine. And so nine is our answer. All right, let's go ahead and code this out. Let's start our function by just defining the function header itself. So we'll say def max sub array sum. That's what we're going to call it. And we're going to take one parameter r, and that's going to be our array. So r. And then the first step is that we have to generate our prefix sum array. And to do this, we can just use a technique that we used in the range sum query video. We'll just say sums is equal to zero times length of r plus one. And so we're just adding an extra index just so then we can account for any possible out of bound errors. Next, we can iterate through our array and we'll say for i in range length of r. And inside this, we'll say sums at i plus one is equal to the previous item plus what we're adding. So that's r at i. All right, now that we've created our prefix summary, we have to generate the max difference between the largest bound and the smallest bound. So to do this, we'll just say max end is equal to sums at negative one. Max end is just that variable that we were working with that lets us know what is the maximum upper bound that we've seen so far. And so at the beginning, we've only seen the very last element. So that's going to be our max end to start with. And then we're going to have a variable called res and res is just gonna start off as false. But basically res is going to be the answer that we return. Res is going to be the max possible sum that we can create and we'll update res so that it's not going to return false. The next part is to iterate through our prefix sum array. So we're going to start at the very end, except one element before the very end, and we're gonna go all the way to the beginning. So we'll say for i in range length of sums minus two, and then negative one, negative one. So we're saying minus two because that'll actually start us off at the second to last element. And then here we'll just put a colon. Next, we have to update our max end if we see a new value that is larger. So we'll say max end is equal to max and we'll take two options. So we'll say max end itself, or we can say sums at i plus one. 
So again, we're saying i plus one and not i because we wanna make sure that our contiguous array that we select from this larger array is going to have at least one element. And that only happens if we leave a little bit of room to calculate our new max end. And so that's the plus one. Next, we can update res. So we'll say res is equal to max res or max end minus sums at i or max end minus sums at i. So essentially what we're doing here is remember that on line six, we said that res was false. So we need to make sure that if it's false, we update it to be whatever this is. But if it's not false, we consider whatever value it was. So it'll take this value and not the second value. It'll take res, it'll compare it to max end minus sums at index i, and it'll just pick the bigger one. So that ensures that we don't run into any errors. And finally, we can just return res. So that concludes it for this algorithm. And let's go ahead and test this. So I've just created a small script to validate our code. And so we can just run this by saying import max subarray sum checker. And of course, you can test this on your own with the input that we tried out at the beginning of this video, but I'm just going to run it with this validator. And we run this and we see that we get all of the cases have passed. So that's it for this video. And I hope this was helpful.